November 9, the 313th day of 2023. There are 52 days left in the year. Good morning, MB, guiding you through in the know at K105. On Litchfield's country station, 1039 The Moose, live online at K105.com via the Apple and Android smartphone app. Using the SoundCloud, iTunes, or Spotify podcast on Facebook, on YouTube, on the platform formerly known as Twitter. And the hashtag is in the know. Coming up today, we'll update you on the latest news headlines from around the community, the county, the Commonwealth, and the country. Duda Allen, uh, Duda Hudson from the uh, Young Professionals of Grayson County will be here to have a conversation. And we'll look back on last night's GOP debate. That and a whole lot more coming up today here on in the no settling into my left rolling mock nine with her hair on fire this is my beautiful wife the beautiful girl good morning sweetheart good morning how you doing i'm okay you are a fan of a of a good life hack or two Yes. Right, you run across I, some things mm-hmm. that go, hey, this makes life easier. In the refrigerator, if you're trying to remove odors, you may stick a box of Arm & Hammer. Is that baking soda? It is. No, it's not baking powder. It's baking no. soda. You put mm-hmm. it in there, and it's supposed to absorb all of the uh, odors in there. Apparently, Charmin Ultra Soft will do the same thing. Really? People are putting toilet paper in their <laughs> fridge because the TP apparently is so good at absorbing hmm. that it will it will be a surrogate for the Arm and Hammer. I like so it. if okay. you're without the Arm and Hammer, give the old Charmin. My honey's clean. Right? Got to give it a little try there, and your uh, refrigerator might be clean as well. I like that. So okay. Something good maybe for the holidays to put in there. He's a five-time winner of the coveted Ohio News Hawk Award. He's the two-time Silver Sound nominee, covering every corner of the globe. London, Budapest, Rio, Tokyo, and even Litchfield. He's Sam Gormley. And the sports. Morning, Sam. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. I, 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 am, I can't remember. Are you pro-turkey or are you... Uh, <laughs> are you I mean, indifferent I'm not, to like, turkey. Indifferent. You're just indifferent. Yeah. All right. So, would you fall into this class? A survey says 32 percent of adults, which I'll include you in. Oh, I, I do happen to be one of those. Say they would prefer a hot dog over the traditional Thanksgiving dinner. I wouldn't be against it. Really? So, huh. if you're so if your mom is tuned in, you're just saying, and, and you know what? Don't go to all the trouble, mom. We'll just have and, dogs. And she would be. She would be fine with yeah, that yeah, too. Yeah, she even has said that it's it's just as you know, it's a lot. It's a lot of work for her and and everything. And it is a lot. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, and and I'd be fine with like at Christmas we've now started just uh, she makes like a white chicken chili mm-hmm. and it's it's good because mm-hmm. it's for the most part it just sits there on the on the stove right. all day. You do all the work at the uh, beginning, you know. Mm-hmm. By the way, my mama made some of that white tiger chili as we call it as she calls it and then it uh, it ran downhill the other it day did. and it was really good so was when i was sick s- sounds so. like uh, sounds like great moms think alike mm-hmm. in making that dish uh speaking of i was um when was it monday i don't know my my mom we were comparing uh what i'm preparing for thanksgiving meal and she said that's that's a lot and i said no i mean not really it's it's then here's here's why it's not a lot. And she said, "Well, can I I help you by supplying some of the ingredients?" And I said, "You don't let me help supply some of the <laughs> ingredients for what you make." So <laughs> no. And at least she took my answer, and we went along. But it'll be here before we know it. Thanksgiving yes. two weeks from today. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, it's kind of kind of crazy that worry. It is crazy. Worry uh, at that point. So think of it this way: Santa will be entering Herald Square about two weeks from right now. Mm-hmm. It'll be within the will be within the hour that Santa will be rolling down past Macy's. So well, it'll be here before we know him. According to the Cook family, though, it's been Christmas for for three weeks. Nobody now. nobody <laughs> listens to them. Uh, cool air will take over to end the week, so it will feel more like fall and closer to Thanksgiving. After the day is uh, finished, we are going to uh, creep back up to sixty four today. We got down underneath that in the early morning hours. But we won't warm up much more than that. And some moisture moved through the area off to the north of us this morning. 
We'll see mostly cloudy in 64, although we see sunshine in North Litchfield currently. Tonight, showers and a low of 48. That's primarily across the southern portions of the region. I think the rain tonight is going to dip down south of Louisville and come across Bowling Green, Nashville, and of course through the uh, Twin Lakes area. Tomorrow, some morning showers, afternoon sun, a high of 59. Veterans Day looking nice, 56 is the high. It's just going to be a fall weekend. It's going to be calm. It's going to be dry. It's going to be, uh, I wouldn't call it cold. I would just call it fall. It's a mm-hmm. November weekend. We'll top out high in the mid-50s, and we'll get back into the 60s next week. But my guess is the 80s are gone until 2024. Yeah. We might get some warm days in the 70s between here and there, but I just kind of think that the 80s are mm-hmm. probably uh, – in the mothballs until yeah. sometime next uh, Good next Cougar football weather, too, tomorrow night. Yeah, that's right. It was fun while it lasted. I, speaking of fun, I enjoyed watching the GOP debate last night. They finally um, got the, – they've cut the field down to enough where you can have an actual debate. When they line up 43 people on a stage <laughs> – they it's just not it's just it's chaos and I don't like it. So the five were there. The one that the one that everybody, you know, knows about was not there. But it's interesting. The Christie and the Tim Scott are kind of the outliers. And right there in the center, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis is either your presidential candidate or a VP candidate. One of one of those two. And I wouldn't be surprised if Trump manages to hang on. I would not be surprised that Trump doesn't try and put Nikki Haley on the ticket. He chose her as an ambassador. She was part of the administration before. It would be a popular choice with women. And so it's uh, it's possible. But Vivek Ramaswamy is the, the fly in the ointment. He's the one that pokes jabs at everyone on the stage. And we had almost had a uh, Will Smith, Chris Rock moment because Vivek Ramaswamy last night was talking about he gets criticized for campaigning on TikTok because he thinks that's where his generation is, and he's probably right. The others are talking about the dangers of TikTok and the relationship to China. Well, Ramaswamy says uh, Nikki Haley should not be very critical of TikTok when her own daughter uses and posts on TikTok. And Nikki Haley pretty much almost said, keep my daughter's name out your mouth. I mean, that's what, and so he got great booze and yeah, he's getting, he's getting that. a lot of shove back today, yeah, but leave, leave the kids out. He called her Dick Cheney in three inch heels. And then she right. countered and said, they're five inch heels. Thank you. And I don't wear them unless I can run in them. And I use them as uh, uh, ammunition. She said she could, you know, she could weaponize her heels, but <laughs> so I thought it was uh, it was an interest. I like that format. I like the five. He, uh, Ramaswamy even took on the moderators. He said, why, why are people from NBC hosting this debate? You know, you need Tucker Carlson or you need whoever. And so he, he, he challenged the mainstream media at several well, turns last night. I would argue that that's almost better. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, For a debate, I yeah. would argue that's better because then there's no – I mean, if you really think that there's political affiliation, like – in in those anchors and in those moderators, then they probably all want all five of them to lose. So it's sure it's, what he was what he was taking the task over is the uh, perception from the from the conservative side, the perception that the mainstream media colluded as much colluded as much in election interference as any, anyone by hiding things about the Biden administration that could have changed the outcome. Would it have not? I don't know. And are those things true? I don't know that they are. But it seems like the further we go, the more we realize that there's a possibility of it. And I think what even even heard me say with Congressman uh, talk with Congressman Guthrie last week, he, that these checks that there are proof of, he's asking, like, when is the mainstream media going to cover these things and tell the truth about what's going on with the with the administration? So when that happens, I don't I don't know if it will or it uh, or it won't. Governor Bashir sat down yesterday with the Associated Press uh, after his first sit down interview uh, since election night. And then he had a uh, briefing in the Capitol yesterday. One of the things he said, he told the told the um, Associated Press, he said, I want to make sure I get this right. That's why I was uh, taking some time. He said his reelection sent a clear message that anger politics should end 
amplifying that theme in the interview, he denounces efforts to rile people up to get them to dislike another Kentuckian or another American in order to get a certain number of votes. Uh, he's right about that. There were there were a bunch of Republicans that voted for Andy Bashir. We know it had to be so because of the way that the registration is composed in Kentucky now. So I always talk about the middle. In fact, I've got it written in, in the margins. Is you your, your far right base and your far left base, you're not moving those people. Those people aren't changing their ideology. They're going to vote for their candidate no matter who they are. They're just going to do that. But the Matt Bevan be mean to people thing did not work four years ago. And there was not enough, I have a vision for Kentucky. Like the GOP messaging was not, it was more boo Biden and boo Bashir. Blah, 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 blah. And there is a there is room for a positive message in the middle. There are enough people swimming in the middle that are swinging elections. And I think that in ways of what we saw in 2019 with Matt Bevan, was an omen of the way things were going to go for Donald Trump in 2020. If we aren't careful to learn a lesson from Daniel Cameron, the same thing might happen in 2024. So there are lessons to be learned from last night, and I think we should, we as Americans and Kentuckians should should heed them. One thing from the conference yesterday, the media conference, they he started talking about the lieutenant governor, uh, Jacqueline Coleman. He said, we do joint meetings on virtually everything we do. We are partners, so if you ask me, her role is everything. Well, someone asked her, do you want to run for governor in four years? And I liked it. Her, her response was, she said, that is a little like putting uh, Christmas decorations up before Halloween. And I thought, she said, too early to decide that. But she, I did like that line. Me too. I thought, little, it, was, I, I thought it was good. And so she's, uh, she could position herself to run for governor in four years. I will back to the GOP debate last night. Nikki Haley is siphoning off some of the Ron DeSantis support. There are enough people curious about, curious enough about her that they think she might be Trump-esque. There she is on your screen. They think she might be Trump-esque enough that if he is a non-starter, they don't get if they don't get Trump because of he's not qualified or he's not you know eligible, whatever. Then they might look at look at her, and that's why I'm telling you, DeSantis, DeSantis, Haley, uh, even Ramaswamy are on the ticket in some form this time. Well, not, we'll be beyond it this time next year. Earlier, uh, maybe a few days ago, we told you about two troopers from Grayson County had been recently promoted within the Kentucky State Police. Another that we've learned of is a KSP Sergeant Chris Baker. He serves as the Post Three Commander of the driver testing branch down in Bowling Green, and he was also included in that group of promotions from lieutenant to captain. He was born in Breckenridge County, but he's lived in Grayson County for a little over 20 years, so congratulations on his promotion as well. We rely upon him a whole lot. He's the one that lets the good or the bad drivers out. He's the one trying to say, no, you don't deserve yeah. to be on the mm-hmm. road. Mm-hmm. You go back Tough home. Job. You go back home and try again. <laughs> you just got to think that uh, before you know it, a lay will be down there. <laughs> before you know it, yeah. <laughs> Keep that out your mouth. Right? <laughs> She'll be there before you know the it. <laughs> state police arrested a beaver dam woman on drug charges. Late Tuesday night, troopers and the Ohio County Sheriff's Office executed a search warrant at the 3600 block of US 62 east of Beaver Dam. During a search of the residence, they seized methamphetamine, a large amount of currency, uh, etc. They arrested 54-year-old Angela Sublett and charged her with trafficking in a controlled substance, possession of a handgun by a convicted felon, and etc. She is lodged in the Ohio County Detention Center on a $10,000 cash bond. Um, did, did, you know did, me. I can't let it go. Right? <laughs> you know, as well, soon as I saw the mug shot, I thought. I don't understand. Are we trying that on? Right. Like, can she I, not it, put it you, up? Got this this... In a, you got this in a schmedium? Right. <laughs> did they not have her size? I, I, the, the first color doesn't doesn't suit me well. I mean, right? It's just a couple shades off. It's so right. strange. Yeah. yeah. I don't you, understand. You got something in a little more oh, of a mauve. You know, you know maybe, right. maybe she had something written that they were not willing to... To be allowed on her me shirt. Well, uh-huh. I mean, but, they, they don't typically they don't typically scrutinize that. Like if you're uh-huh. 
If you're wearing just, your employer's shirt, if you're foolish enough to be wearing your employer's yeah, shirt when you get arrested, well, that's just... But it, mm-hmm. what if it says a really, really ugly word or something? <sighs> I I've mean, seen the one that says, like, some, I'm with stupid or I something. Yeah, just, I don't know. I'm curious to know. Yeah, too, yeah but, me too. Somebody, but as yeah, soon as I saw it, I thought, it. why is she holding this up? She's clearly holding a jumpsuit up in front of her normal clothes. Were they in such a rush to get the booking photo? Like, was their was their camera on 1%? And they said, hurry, we got to snap this. Is that uh-huh. what their jumpsuits look like? I didn't even realize the that. The female versions oh, are, Oh, yeah. okay. Well, that... I, yeah, it yeah. makes I sense what it was. I still have questions, but I, oh, I didn't know that's what it was. She didn't have time to change. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, I guess in my mind, all jumpsuits are orange. But listen, if you're around the campfire this morning, it means you've been with the show a long time, most likely. You know that something like that, I cannot just let it let yeah, right. Right. I, can, I, I, I have to move on. I got. I, I cannot move on. I go. Uh-huh. I got to know about this. Yes, somebody. Yeah. A Bullitt County woman has been accused of killing her two young children. The Bullitt County Sheriff's Office responded Wednesday morning about eleven ten to Brentwood Drive in Shepherdsville to report of a shooting. They found two victims, six and nine, suffering from gunshot wounds, transported to Norton's, where they were pronounced deceased. The mother, the 32-year-old Tiffany Lucas, was detained at the shooting scene. She was later arrested and charged with the murder of her children. Evil. Wow. The FBI, Louisville Field Office, announced yesterday something that perhaps could uh, impact you. Jury duty scammers are targeting Kentuckians and are explaining how to avoid becoming a victim. Now, this one's for you, Miss Buckles. Okay. Because, Wait, then, when I read this, I was like, there's one person I'm thinking yeah. of that could fall you, for this. You are so eager to <laughs> be a so juror eager. that you would likely take the bait if they <laughs> called you. Oh, okay. Let's so see. this All is right. a telephone scam claiming okay. that you have failed to report to jury duty. During mm-hmm. the call, the scammer impersonates a law enforcement officer okay. or officer of the court. They claim you failed to report for jury duty and may threaten <laughs> criminal prosecution or jail time. They tell the victim that he or she can avoid arrest by paying a fine immediately and may request payment information or other personal information. They do go as far as using titles and badge numbers of legitimate law enforcement officers. Listen, it's not that Mm -hmm. hard, right? Hop on the law enforcement's website. Oh, Deputy so-and-so and and his badge Mm -hmm. number is so-and-so. but I feel like I've been around you all. Like It seems like everybody in this building but myself over the years, have had jury duty. Mm -hmm. I think I would be smart enough to know this is not how it works. Yeah, Mm -hmm. uh, yes. This is not how it works. I would be skipping up the walk with a piece of paper. You know, it would be like, Mm -hmm. just be prepared. We've made some calls to make sure that it. Uh, mm-hmm. We've we've got you on the on the do not call list. <laughs> NKU adding six new varsity sports over the next two years. So if you hear more athletes becoming a student or a student athletes for the Norse, mm-hmm. is that right? For the the Fighting Darren Horns, um, they are expanding their program. Six six new sports: women's stunt, men's and women's swimming, men's volleyball, men's and women's triathlon. They are already expanding their track and field and their spirit programs. So they, they they've, been, they've been rumored for a long time to add football. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if this means no, and they're just going to add these instead of football. Speaking of football, U of L plays tonight, and most likely U of L is going to be in the ACC title game, aren't they? Probably. Yeah, I mean it's just and they've they've play, they've locked into an easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, conference they, schedule. They've been a, to avoid the heavy hitters of the conference. Yeah, they haven't had to play Clemson. They haven't had to play Florida State, even though Clemson's having a down year. Um, they did beat Notre Dame, but... But they host the Cavaliers tonight at... Uh, the stadium uh, formerly uh, known as... Stadium, the stadium they play at. Yeah. It's some, cr- some credit union or something. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, they play tonight. And then uh, UK basketball tonight, right? Tomorrow the, manana. Tomorrow night. All right, there we go. Got to get to a break. We'll come back. Got more on the way here on In the Note. Comfort is everlasting. Comfort is a journey that sees no end. Every moment is a memory. Every encounter, a peace. Empathy may be our foundation, but comfort is the heart that continues the Rogers Funeral Home legacy. A steadfast tradition from our very first service to our most recent farewell. Guided by Dave and Jordan Atwell. Hello, friends. My name is Reagan Atwell. My parents take good care of me and my little sister. They'll do the same for your family. Discover more online at rogerswatkins.com or experience the Rogers difference personally on Main Street in Clarkson. Everybody get ready, time to start a new day. Let's hit the ground running in a healthy way. Take a first at the fitness, even if it's just a little. Soon you'll be feeling just as fit as a fiddle. Fit as a fiddle on a July night. I walk around town, make you feel alright. Take the first at the fitness, even if it's just a 
Community Health Partners want you to be as fit as a fiddle. Attention propane customers, has your existing provider been hard to reach? Have you had questions that haven't been answered or experienced long wait times or been asked to reply and send emails for customer support? Don't waste any more of your time. Southern States Co-op in Bowling Green will take your call. They will even swap out your existing tank to theirs at no charge. Southern States Bowling Green Co-op is ready to serve all your propane needs in Bowling Green and surrounding counties because empty is never an option. Successful small business owners know that having an ally in decoding the data of your business performance is vital. A trusted source that can interpret financial reports, advise on tax code, and assess overall performance can be the difference between sleepless nights and peace of mind. The certified public accounting firm of Buckles, Travis, and Hart is your ally in making sure your business is performing at an optimum level. Call or contact today to find out how Buckles, Travis, and Hart can help fine-tune your business to create peak performance. 270-259-5604. GraysonCPAs.com. Thinking about furthering your education? At Elizabethtown Community and Technical College, you'll get a high-quality education close to home at a cost that won't break the bank. Enjoy small class sizes with professors who take a personal interest in your success. Scholarships are still available, making our low tuition even more affordable. ECTC's Litchfield campus is now enrolling for classes that start January 8th. Call 270-259-1540 or visit elizabethtown.kctcs.edu to get started. ECTC, college for the real world. Cormark Kentucky has immediate job openings for night warehouse shifts. If you're highly motivated, seeking a family-friendly environment, Cormark Kentucky has full, part, and temporary time positions available with competitive wages, incentives, benefits, vacation, and a fun work atmosphere. Cormark Kentucky offers you a four-day work week. That's three days off a week. Call a recruiter now at 270-259-9341 or apply online at careers.cormark.com. Cormark is an equal opportunity employer. protect teens. That's what a second whistleblower has told a Senate subcommittee. Arturo Behar said that Meta's top leadership ignored his efforts to warn about the harmful effects of the platform. Meta has updated its policies to restrict the use of AI by ad campaigns for politicians, elections, and social issues. Aaron Real explains. Meta is prohibiting political advertisers from using the company's new artificial intelligence tools designed to help brands generate text, backgrounds, and other marketing content. The company says it wants to limit the technology's potential potential risks. The limitations also apply to ad campaigns that qualify as ads for housing, employment, or credit, or those related to health, pharmaceutical, or financial services. The restrictions come as policymakers and civil society groups have increasingly warned about the disruption that AI-generated content could have on the democratic process by misleading voters. And General Motors Cruise is recalling nearly a thousand driverless cars from the roads after a crash involving one of its robo-taxis. Check Report, Mark Mayfield, NBC News Radio. Today is World Freedom Day. It is National Scrapple Day, not Scrabble. If you don't know what oh, Scrapple yeah. is, look it up. Scrapple. Sam knows what it is. He's got the proper ancestry to know. It's also Greek Yogurt Day. It's Thankful Giving Day number eight day, and today is Dessert Mix. Yep. Yeah, Dessert Mix is today. It's also the day we say good morning and welcome to Duda Hudson from the Young Professionals of Grayson County. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good to see you. Um, you are a um, uh, daughter. You are a granddaughter. You are a working mom. Uh, you're a former Miss Grayson County. Yeah. Yes. Um, but perhaps the biggest entry on your resume is you're a former neighbor of mine. Yes. Yes. Back <laughs> in our golf course day. You, you tell people that all the time, I'm sure, <laughs> don't you? Yes. Um, I, th I was thinking we could do a trivia contest and probably stump a lot of people. It would be, what is Duda's given name? Yes. And I would imagine many people don't know. No, they don't. I've actually had this conversation recently because people are like, what? And with my little boy, too. My oh, dad yeah. the other day, he was like, hey, do you know her real name? And he's like, it's Duda. <laughs> I'm like, no. Uh, he said no. So should we keep the listeners guessing? I'm not going to tell them, them, but I am curious to know. <laughs> we'll save that for another another day. We might actually need that as a trivia contest. Do 
Is there anyone that does call you your given name still? There is one person off the top of my head, and she is my aunt that lives in Tennessee. So. Okay. She just refuses to give in? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or she, or no one's ever told her. Hey, people don't call her that. Well, uh, <laughs> maybe both. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, I have noticed more recently... Um, I think you've become a chamber ambassador recently, Mm -hmm. and then I learned you were with this new young professionals group, so super excited to to have you here. Haven't seen you in a while and been able to to catch up, but you're the mother of two. Yes, yes. So working mom, also trying to maintain professional life and be civically engaged. How hard is it to find that balance between work, being a a wife, being a mom, being a professional? Well... I, I'm recently back from maternity leave, so I took 12 weeks. I have a 13-week-old little boy and a three-year-old little boy. Um, I took 13 weeks, or I'm sorry, I took 12 weeks. So I'm recently back. So two weeks in, it's it's hard, but it's manageable right now. Now, as we're going into the busy season with Christmas, it's probably going to get a little bit harder. But right now, I am we're doing good. We are keeping our head above water. <laughs> was it? Was it? Was 12 weeks the point where you were kind of ready to ease back in and do something different, or was it still extremely hard to go back? Oh, it was so hard. Uh, Last week was really, really hard. Now, when I had my three-year-old, I had him in the middle of COVID, so nobody was doing anything, going anywhere, and I was ready to go back to work. And this time, it's it's been a little bit harder. It's, sure. it's been hard. Well, and that's the, you know, that's a constant juggle and a balance. You got to you gotta find room for yourself to enrich yourself. You Because if you don't ca- take care of yourself, it's hard to take care of those around you, the people that are relying upon you, whether that's your customers, whether that's your colleagues, mm-hmm. uh, whether that's your family. So it's, it's hard to do that. Uh, mentioned chamber ambassadorship. Mm-hmm. I have observed that group for a long time, and, and I'm allowed to say this because I'm of their generation they were they were an aging group and I have seen kind of the next generation of am kind of ambassadors come through and decide we're going to be the leadership of this organization so what what chose you uh, what was your motivation to become an ambassador yeah so in order to become an ambassador you have to go through the leadership program that the chamber hosts every two years I think is what it is so I went through that and I was actually termed the class of 2020 but due to COVID and everything I think we ended up uh, launching that in 2022. Um, so I went through that. And then in order to go through that, then, of course, you apply to become an ambassador. So right. I was just ready. You know, going through that program made me realize how much I don't know about Grayson County. And, I, you know, I'm born and raised here, proud of it. My family members are, you know, business people. And I had no idea what all this county had to offer. It's very interesting, and I know you listen to the show a lot. You've been mm-hmm. involved for a long time. You probably heard me talk with people. I, I lovingly call them carpet baggers, but people who come from out of town that choose to come here and live or work, they make a choice to do it, and they sing praises about the area and how great it is, and they're things that we as natives just kind of take for granted. So to hear someone else sell our own community to us or see the other things that are going on around us is uh, confidence building and makes you feel better about where you live and work. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I thought it was really interesting. One of our days, we had went down to um, the Rough River, and we had a lady there talking to us, and she was telling us, like, what really our, like, what our lakes actually bring to our community. And it is unreal how many people visit on the weekends. I don't realize it because they're not all getting off the parkway in one, you know, line of cars. Mm-hmm. But it is unreal. So. I was at the store. I was at a store yesterday getting a, a tire fixed and heard a guy who clearly did, had an accent from away from here. But he's from South Carolina. They lived on the lake for uh, eight or nine years. And so people just pick up and they relocate and they come here because of the topography, the beauty, the seasons, et cetera. So uh, proud to be from this from this area. Uh I'm unfamiliar with, and I suspect I'm unfamiliar with because it's relatively new, mm-hmm. what what is the young professionals? What are the young professionals of Grayson County? When and how were they formed? Yeah, so we are a new group. We were formed, I believe it was, well, if you go by when our bylaws were or when the first meeting is. So our bylaws were completed probably three months ago, and the first meeting was, I want to say, about seven months ago. Um, so we are a new group. Um, and it is open for people, young professionals in the community, ages 18 to 40. 
And what our main goal is, is, you know, we want to be a community partner and an asset for these young professionals because walking into, you know, the business scene, it can be kind of intimidating. And especially when you're young and trying to get on your own two feet. So what we want is we want to be an asset for these people. We want to be like, hey, look, if you want this, we can connect you to that person. So, you know, we um, we are focused on networking and connecting individuals and um, you know, we really want to provide resources to young entrepreneurs as well. And, uh, you know, but but also focusing on that economic growth because Grayson County is headed in a great direction. So, you know, if you get in and you can kind of, you know, for lack of better words, grab that bull by the horns and ride on, you know, yeah. that's what we want to help people do. It's interesting how the landscape is so dramatically changing just from uh, when, when I was a, a young up and comer trying to, uh, you know, find my way into, into business over the last you know, 27, 28 years mm -hmm. and seeing how the landscape has changed here locally, where even in 1995, we were still manufacturing centric. There was not a lot of entrepreneurial ship. You either, you kind of went into fine Finance, you might have gone into insurance or you went into manufacturing and there those were just kind of the boxes that you fit into but now because and you mentioned networking it's the key to everything and social networking and business networking has really enabled people to connect your generation are able to connect and say well hey this person makes this and this person does that and you create these groups and rising tide raises all boats there's very there's very much a more entrepreneurial landscape in Grayson County than there was 10 15 years ago yeah absolutely, absolutely. and I guess these are the people that you're trying to bring together as a collective group oh yes absolutely and you know I touched on it earlier you, you know Social media is just, I mean, it is a powerhouse. You can, you can find a recipe or, you know, your mom's second cousin on <laughs> social media. Right. And it, you know, that is kind of one of those things too. Um, you know, when we founded this group, we had spent so much time focusing on, you know, social media presence. And I was kind of like, you know, at first I was like, well, who, who really cares? But wait wait we all care because that's how we're that's how we're finding out everything mm -hmm. so yeah there's a there's a spirit going on right now locally whether it's the revitalization of the square a return to commerce i'm seeing some of these uh smaller networking groups form or i'm seeing more youth solidifying into leadership roles it's you can just tell that there is a a change afoot and i think our area is going to look extremely different because we're in the ripple effect of, of Blue Oval, the long-term mm -hmm. impacts to that regionally. So as you mentioned, it's a, it's a, an exciting time. It's also an exciting time for the young professionals of Grayson County because you all are rolling out your first event, and it's coming up this weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Santa's first stop is going to be this weekend at the Grayson County Middle School. It is from 4 to 6 p.m. So we have partnered with Santa Claus. He's taken some time out of... Uh, the North Pole, and he's going to stop down here, and he is going to be ready for pictures and a little meet and greet. It seems hard to me, hard to believe that here we are, the second weekend in November, oh. and Santa's going to make his first stop to the region. But it will be here. It will be here before we know it. How does it? How does it work? If I'm a mom or dad, and I've got a, if I got a kid, and I need to do, I uh, need an appointment. Do I need to call ahead? Do I just show up? How does it work? Yeah, no. So we are. Um, you just show up. It's at the Grayson County Middle School in the cafeteria. The doors will not open until 4 p.m. Now, I know that it is the middle school. So when I say the doors, I mean the cafeteria doors will not open until 4 p.m. So you come in and then um, each family is guaranteed, you know, it's a $5 donation. So what we're donating the money to is the KSP um, Shop with a Trooper and all that money is going to post four. Um, but so it's $5 per pose. And what that means is, you know, um, if you want a picture with, if it's a family of three and they want a picture together and then a picture with, Bobby and Susie and Jimmy, you know, all individuals. So that would be, you know, a $20 donation. That's what's recommended. Okay. Um, but you show up and then you'll fill out a form. So we will take down your email address. And then we have a, we have a photographer there and she is going to be um, editing these photos. 
to get back to you all in order for you all to get them on your uh, Christmas card. That's the name of the game right yes. there. That's why people are doing it, aren't they? Yes, The absolutely. turnaround time because the cards will have to go out soon. Yes. I, I'm, I am in um, great appreciation and admiration for you all being able to pull this off. You must have some <laughs> powerful people in the organization because Santa is a tough get this time of year. So the fact that you all were able to get a couple of hours – you all must be pretty powerful already. <laughs> well, I'd like to think we are. <laughs> uh, if I want to get involved, if I fit the criteria, if I'm 18 to 40, mm -hmm. how do I get involved with young professionals of Grayson County? Yeah, reach out to us. We have a great leadership council. Um, I, myself, I'm the vice president. Hannah Cown is the president, and we have Miss Hope Tollett. She's our secretary. And then we have Aaron Goff as our past president-elect. I think I'm saying that right. Okay. So reach out to one of us. Um, of course, you can always stop by the chamber and pick up an application, or you can email us. And the email address is youngprofessionalsofgc at gmail.com. And then, of course, you can always access or get a hold of one of us through Facebook or Instagram. Well, I wish you all, all the success in building the organization. And hopefully Santa's first stop is a big hit on uh, on Friday or Thank on Saturday, you. Saturday evening. Okay. Duda, good to see you as good always. To see you. Thanks for coming. That's Duda Hudson from Young Professionals of Grayson County. Got to get to a break. We'll come back. More on the way here on In the Know. The Kentucky Department for Community-Based Services is hiring. DCBS invites you to be part of an inclusive team of caring professionals that helps all Kentucky families through a rewarding career in family support or social services. They have job openings in their county offices across the state and offer great benefits like hybrid work schedule, competitive salary, paid holidays, and many opportunities for training and promotions, plus state employee discounts. Go online to chfs.ky.gov and enter DCBS Jobs in the search field. It's a new day at DCBS. Join them an Equal Opportunity Employer MFD. Do you own an annuity, either fixed rate, indexed, or variable? Are you paying high fees and getting low returns? If so, Annuity General would like you to have this free book to learn the pitfalls and mistakes of buying an annuity. The Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers contains the little-known truths about annuities, like how to help reduce your fees and increase retirement income. And it's free. That's right, free. As a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report just for calling. We researched over 1,000 annuities and summarized rates and benefits from financially strong insurers. You get annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers and the annuity rate report, both absolutely free for calling Annuity General today. Hurry, supplies are limited. Call now. 800-273-7075. 800-273-7075. That's 800-273-7075. It's time to make important decisions about your Medicare prescription drug coverage. The Kentucky State Health Insurance Assistance Program provides free, unbiased guidance in selecting a Medicare Part D or Medicare Advantage plan. If you have questions or need help, the Kentucky State Health Insurance Assistance Program can guide you through the enrollment period, which ends December 7th. More information is available about Kentucky SHIP or how you can volunteer at 1-877-293-7447. That's 1-877-293-7447. On the basketball court, you have to know where the lines are. It's just as important to know where the lines are in your own yard. Kentucky law generally requires you to have underground utility lines located before most excavation work, even if it's on your own property. If you don't call 811 and you damage a natural gas line, the Kentucky Public Service Commission will investigate you and you may be fined up to $1,250. Much better to stay within the bounds of the law and call before you dig to start putting in that backboard or goalpost. For more information, visit P. This message brought to you by the Kentucky Public Service Commission. Kids across America are going to school hungry. Millions of kids every day. But one simple thing can help change all of this for a hungry child in America. Good healthy food and the energy it brings. With help from caring people across America, No Kid Hungry is providing healthy meals and hope to hungry kids so they can build better futures. To learn more about ending child hunger in America, go to helpnokidhungry.org today. K105 Weather is brought to you by Future Designs Building Materials on Quarry Road in Litchfield. Twin Lakes Weather! 
mix of sun and clouds this afternoon as temperatures hover in the low 60s. Rain takes over overnight, especially for those of you south of the Ohio River. That rain will move out by the time you reach Friday afternoon. Highs tomorrow in the 50s. From the Wave News Storm Tracking Team, I'm meteorologist Tawana Andrew. Today's Did You Know is brought to you by Litchfield Memorial Chapel. Providing Grayson County with compassionate, professional funeral, cremation, and pre-need services. Litchfield Memorial Chapel celebrating life one family at a time. 259-4566 or visit litchfieldmemorial.com. Did you know in Thailand it is customary to give presents on your birthday? Now, I don't necessarily like the premise of that, but if I'm being honest, it probably is more appropriate. Let's let's face it. Our birth had very little to do with us. You should give it to your mom. It, yeah. Right, right. And, I mean, mm-hmm. you there were there were probably OB nurses involved. There was mm-hmm. probably, you know, a doctor involved. There were, you know, people in the nursery. There were not to, not just mom. Uh Dad was dad was a participant at some point in time, so uh, how little, how much I you know is is open to debate. So maybe we should be giving the gifts on our birthday, but I kind of like it the way that it is. Yeah, I'm all for the way it is. <laughs> some, some fans are roasting People magazine for making Patrick Dempsey the sexiest man alive, saying. Hey, it's not 2005. That is true. I will tell you, though, th- I, I, this publication has a history of naming a salt and pepper sexiest man alive, whether it's Clooney, mm-hmm. whether it's Sean, Sean Connery, whether it's who, whoever. It's typically someone mm-hmm. in their 40s, 50s, or 60s. Yes. Is that why you didn't? Because you're not quite salt and pepper? That is 100% why. Although I, I'm, I'm a little more salt every day. Um, before, especially right before I get a haircut, I'm like, oh, there's a lot more salt and pepper in there. Be here before you can't stop it. Actually, you're gonna be, you're gonna. I'm glad that you brought that up because my point to ponder today is a perfect segue from that. So, is 57 okay for the sexiest man alive? It's all I right. Think so. Yeah, it's. I mean, she's the one that has to answer these questions. Is, That's right. Because I mean, you are the. The target audience of People Magazine, like not yeah, necessarily you, is, but your but age group is the target audience I mean, I, of People I Magazine. I have no problem like commenting on the sexiest woman either. You know, right? What absolutely, I mean? yeah, yeah, hundred, hundred uh, percent. That's exactly what we're saying. No, you should not celebrate you all month during your birthday. <laughs> hey, month. that did cross my mind though. It's like who was giving out the present? We anyway, do, go ahead. Do Sorry. have a tendency to uh, spread it out over a, an elongated period of time. SAG after a strike ends after one hundred eighteen days. They struck a new tentative deal with Hollywood's major studios. So it looks like we've got the writers and we got the actors back to work shortly. So maybe some new entertainment content will be spinning up before we know it. I can't even catch up on old. So, I, I mean, yay for all of you all out there waiting for new content. So. It has led me to explore some things that... You know, I maybe wouldn't have gone back and watched again. I told you I spent time with that Ken Burns documentary. Even kicked the tires on some of the other Ken Burns documentaries, thinking, well, I might enjoy I might enjoy this. But just serial television has been... I have gotten to the point where I'm sort of missing it. Like, there's not always something waiting that I can go, oh, I can watch that. The Candy Cane Lane is an Eddie Murphy holiday movie. The full trailer is out. So it will hit Prime Video December 1st. I don't think it's going to theaters before. I think it's going straight to Prime. But Eddie Murphy, Candy Cane Lane. Yeah, this came out, I guess, yesterday. It has been very recent, the trailer. The trailer. Because it, I have, uh, yes, I have seen it multiple times. It's being put in front of my eyes. Yes, it, it would be on your TV, yes. on your devices a lot, <laughs> since, since you are a 100% fire TV. Mm. Shrek 5, speaking of Eddie Murphy, Shrek 5 release date has been reportedly leaked by an intern's memo. Ooh. The internet is in a frenzy right now over looks like what is big Shrek news. The apparent leaking of the release date for the fifth movie 
courtesy of an intern. If the screenshot is legit, the woman made a big blunder because she's hyping the fact she worked on Shrek 5 this year, which she says is set to come out in 2025. Uh So not even next year. I wonder if she was a paid intern. I don't even know that I ever saw Shrek 4. Because I heard it was one of those things I heard so many people didn't like it, and Mm -hmm. I didn't want to... Didn't R- want to jump ruined. into that. Yeah, because, I mean, Shrek 1 and Shrek 2 are, are classics. Right. Well, let me let me count the number of Shrek movies that I've watched this year. Okay. There we was... know that you have never watched any and I Shrek. can't believe that because they're zero. great movies. He, and I don't know why he won't give in. Maybe because it's DreamWorks. But he would love Donkey if he would oh, give it a you shot. Would love Donkey. But he he's already dug his heels in. Better out than in, as I always say. I've heard, an, I've heard enough Donkey quotes and bits. I don't have to watch the movie. I get all the donkey. The donkey. When the bird blows up. I mean, it, it's just, but he is dug <laughs> in. He is standing on this hill and it, it will never happen. It'll be you and I'm I gonna have to, talking I'm about gonna Shrek. Have to, so. I'm going to put a, uh, a bug in the Leia's ear. Because if there's one, she, if there's one person that'd be able to get you to do it, it might be her. If she came to you and said, I want you to sit down and watch a movie with me, and this is the movie that we're watching. 100%. I mean, yeah, exactly. Okay. She, she, I was going to say, she's... I'm not defiant enough. I mean, I just... I, just I don't know have. that it's on I any of the streaming services. Say, I think he would say, well, we, we could, but what about... And he would pull something Star newfangled Wars. and sparkly out of his back pocket, well, you now, know? Now, now, 100%. If she said, will you watch Shrek with me? I would be, will you watch Star Wars A New Hope with yeah, me? See, so you just gave because him that idea. Like, uh-huh. le- that, that just... Leverage and, and your you, position. And you know what she'd say? <laughs> no. <laughs> life's a, <laughs> life's about Shrek. leverage. Yeah, she'd say, mm, no. She'd yeah. say, well, then I'm, I didn't want to watch yeah, Shrek Yeah, she'd just anyway. walk on around yeah. in the next room. <laughs> and then, see and you then later. And then you'd get the question. <laughs> yeah, enough. and I'd be like, yeah, okay, whatever. The White Lotus Season 3 will be longer, bigger, and crazier. According to creator I, I Mike White, up on that. Mike White, who, by the way, I'll just never look at Mike White without seeing Ned Schneebly. I mean, he 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 was Ned Schneebly in School of Rock, and I will forever see him as that. You will not be surprised to learn Taylor Swift is Apple Music's 2023 Artist of the Year. Who could have seen that coming? It's hard to disagree. I mean. Say what you want about her. It's yeah. hard. To, it's hard to that's disagree. Yeah, that's, that's the right. thing. I'm, I mean, I'm not mad at you. I just don't like it. Yeah. You like her a little bit better. Do I? You've softened on her just a little bit. I can tell. I mean, I just don't have any. I mean, there's yeah. nothing negative I can say about her. My <laughs> thing right. is I just don't care for she her. Just doesn't Go appeal, on and do she just you. She doesn't appeal to your. And she, good business she, sense. That's right. That, she's I mean, a, amen. But. She's successful. Here's the, the weekend funny tweets from women. Megan said. <laughs> this I, this sounds like something I would watch and hear happen. I sure have a lot of opinions about cooking shows for someone who's eating a Paw Patrol string cheese for breakfast. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> I think moms know what that's uh, like. Jesse says, moms are like your cousin's neighbor's husband's aunt died. Just thought you should know. Moms do have a tendency to do that, right? They mm-hmm. tell you somebody died. Like, How do I know this person? Well... That, mm-hmm. You know, Aunt So and So. No, I don't or, know. I don't you know. You met them, them once mm-hmm. when you were a baby. You went to that reunion one time. Ellie, uh, no, Emily says, I love when people are able to introduce me to their grandparents using their insane made up names in a 100% serious tone. Uh, this is Peeps and Lolly. <laughs> we, we, we do have some funny names for grands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Linda says, This, I relate to this, Linda. Linda, listen, says, I'm, I'm remembers when a 32 inch TV weighed 450 pounds oh, years gosh, old. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one thing that if, if technology has gotten better, it is making those lighter. And these are the women's funniest tweets. Funny, funny tweets. And uh, okay. well, women's sure. funniest tweets. I mean, you okay. got, you got the TV, the new TV in here. And, and we carried it out. And that tweets. was, that was a decent sized TV. I remember in. If it wasn't probably for the size of it, mm-hmm. it probably could have been a one-person job. It mm-hmm. was, but it's hard we to, would have needed three of us to carry a 32-inch one of those box TVs. It's, one, it's wider than my wingspan. Correct. You know, so that's the thing about the TVs they've gotten, and that's diagonal measurements. So, uh, six-foot Candy said, "I suppose, suppose she's a tall woman <laughs> named Candy, or she, perhaps she's a tall stripper." Oh. Uh, well, well. Every, in Eastern Kentucky? <laughs> maybe. Oh, dear. This is 
This is spot on, by the way. Every healthy marriage requires compromise. I want to decorate for the holidays this weekend, and my husband wants to decorate after Thanksgiving. So we compromised and are decorating this, this Saturday. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Krista Pachion says, some random lady took down our outside decorations because Halloween is over. And now I want to invite her inside because dinner is over, and I don't want to clean hey. up from that any more than I wanted to clean now, up from there Halloween. We go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, uh, come on in, Karen. Yeah. You can, Karen, you can, there are lots of unfinished or unput away things around right. here. There, come listen, on in. If you're wanting to tidy up around the place, here are come, some boxes. <laughs> come on, we got we got room for you. <laughs> we got to get to a break. We'll come back, finish it up for the morning here on In the Know. Let me ask you this: Are you a loving person? We all think we are, but the true test is how well we love the people who oppose us, like our enemies. Remember Jonah, the guy in the Bible who gets swallowed by a big fish? God told Jonah to go to Nineveh and share God's love and mercy, but Jonah refused. Nineveh was the capital of the Assyrian Empire, a corrupt, evil nation, and Israel's bitter enemy. The last thing Jonah wanted was for the people of Nineveh to experience anything good. Jonah's story challenges us to examine our own prejudices. Before we get too prideful about how compassionate and loving we are, we should stop and take another look. Sure, we love our friends, family members, and people who agree with us, but that's no great achievement. Even our enemies do that. What defines how loving we truly are is the way we treat the people who oppose us. The natural response is to ridicule or cancel them. The unnatural response is to love sacrificially. Sacrificial love gives beyond what's required of it. It replaces judgment and condemnation with grace and goodwill. Do you love people like that? Loving your enemy is not a popular message, and it may be one of the hardest things you ever do, but it's the only way to create a world that truly promotes love, tolerance, and peace. For Focus on the Family, I'm Jim Daly. Let's see, if something costs less, but people are happier with it, that sounds like something to look into, and that's MediShare. Maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save the typical family 500 bucks a month. And that's huge, but it's also true that people are way more satisfied after making the switch, too. The customer satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan. Double. MediShare works. It's been around for more than a quarter century, and members have shared more than $3 billion of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, you can save a ton and like it better. Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want a plan you're happy with, you can call right now and get a price within two minutes. A very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. 844-94-BIBLE. That's 844-94-BIBLE. 844-94-BIBLE. Cormark, Kentucky has immediate job openings for night warehouse shifts. If you're highly motivated, seeking a family-friendly environment, Cormark, Kentucky has full part and temporary time positions available with competitive wages, incentives, benefits, vacation, and a fun work atmosphere. Cormark Kentucky offers you a four-day work week. That's three days off a week. Call a recruiter now at 270-259-9341 or apply online at careers.cormark.com. Cormark is an equal opportunity employer. The Kentucky Department for Community-Based Services is hiring. DCBS invites you to be part of an inclusive team of caring professionals that helps all Kentucky families through a rewarding career in family support or social services. They have job openings in their county offices across the state and offer great benefits like hybrid work schedule, competitive salary, paid holidays, and many opportunities for training and promotions, plus state employee discounts. Go online to chfs.ky.gov and enter DCBS jobs in the search field. It's a new day at DCBS. Join them, an equal opportunity employer MFD. MB's point to ponder for today. Would going bald be a lot more fun if you lost your hair from the sides instead? Like you you grew into a mohawk? Like if you just gradually looked more like Mr. T, would that be better? You know, it would be interesting. (laughs) Maybe. I I mean, 
You'd be the one to have to answer this <laughs> know, question. That's just kind of why I was wondering. It, it was like, would it just kind of go, hey, my, I'm growing into my mohawk. Would you rather have Mr. T hair or would you uh, have I'd, it? I'd be pitying some fools. I mean, I, I got no problem pitying fools. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Which would you prefer? I don't know. I, I mean, a, a mohawk would be fun for a day or two. It, yeah. If you walked in here with a mohawk one day, like I don't even slight, know what I'd do. Like a slight mohawk, but then I'd be like, good, go ahead and shave all that off. Because see all the bottom? Yeah. I mean, it'd be completely bald. The ship there. has sailed on yeah. mohawk, Sam. I, I'd really want, to see, really want to see Alea's reaction to it if you walk <laughs> in with a mohawk. And- Listen, there have been in this turn, uh, the, the second chance tournament that Jeopardy's been having, there have been two guys with mohawks in the last two weeks. Mm hmm. And they won, didn't they? Uh, they were previous winners mm-hmm. already, yeah. Of course they did. One of them was big and pink, and one of them was more Mr. T, who's like, oh, hey, full pittier. On TV tonight, The Golden Bachelor, and then this makes me laugh because you can tell the people that write the prep service aren't really Big Brother fans because even though it's day 100 and the finale, it says a, Which house, is a, big deal. a house guest is evicted and interviewed. Remaining house guests compete for the power in the next head of household. Mm-hmm. I think it's a little more significant than that yes, on tonight's it is. episode. If you're a big brother person, you know that it's like. That's right. I guess we got, a big deal. we got a bunch of not big brother in to not do Not going to give a shout out to the Panthers and the Bears on Thursday night football? Um, no, I think I'm out on that. I, uh, <laughs> That's an awful our TV, game. Our TV has not been telling us that because it's been killing us about Candy Cane Lane. That's true. Today's highlight in history, this date, 1989, Communist East Germany threw open its borders Allowing citizens to travel freely to the West for the first time in decades. They, uh, the, the photography, the video of that is just amazing. Just seeing Germans like dancing on top of that wall and neat. The passengers and crew of the Mayflower sighted Cape Cod this date in uh, 1620. Whitey Herzog is 92 today. Lou Ferrigno is 72. The Incredible Hulk is 72. Peppa from Salt and Pepper is 59 today. Nicholas Shea is another 50. Salt and pepper. Yep. Cisco, 45 today. Dong, 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 dong. Gone but not forgotten. Hedy Lamar, born in 1914. Spiro T. Agnew, born in 1918. Chart Toppers. Hey, Jude. 1968. Don't make it by. Judy, 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 Judy. Take a sad song. Mm. Is this the best Beatles song? Uh, it's up there. One of my favorites. I like this scene too when this played in Ted Lasso. Mm, yeah. Where uh, Rebecca pretty much tells him, stop worrying about what you can't worry about and go spend the time with what you can control. Yep. All right, let's go to 1977 from the Bond soundtrack. Carly Simon, Nobody Does It Better. Nobody but The Spy Who Loves Me, I think. I think that's right. no skyfall as far as theme completely different for it me is. i hold this up there in high regard because it's it's from an era like when i became a bond fan it's from that great bond era but now there's no i mean there's i like adele more than i like carly simon but i don't know that i like skyfall more than i like this does that make sense all right let's go 1986 Randy Travis. Last night I dug your picture out. What's the matter? You don't like digging up bones? Well, listen, it, I, I, I don't mind it, it actually. I'll table. say that publicly. And However, and I know all the words, but it, it sure. just kind of cracks me up over here. I thought I knew it was from the era of country music that, that, we, both in, to, that we both yeah. enjoy. Sure. Yeah, I've been I mean, listen, he was a big change. Like, he was part of a three or four artist yeah. era that completely changed the direction of country in the mid 80s. You know, he, he had had a rough life, too. Yeah. Finger, and I gave yours a flame. Dude, we, we got to hear some cross this Do we? Thanks, Thanks, things things that's <laughs> Resurrecting than memories of a love that's dead and gone? Come on. I'm resurrecting memories. All right, let's go on. Let's go to 1995. Janet Jackson and Runaway. All right, that's enough. Hey. 
Destiny's Child, Lose My Breath, number one in 04. Hit me. And, of course, 10 years ago today, Katy Perry and Roar, number one. All right, MB Spurlow wisdom for today. To says, never apologize for showing your feelings. When you do, you are apologizing for the truth. Never apologize for showing your feelings. When you do, you are apologizing for the truth. MB Spurlow wisdom for today. Remember, God loves you, and I do too. If you don't know Jesus, let me know, and I'll introduce you. Look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow for another edition of our show. For Sam Gormley, for Beach, I'm MB, and now you're in the know. Powering through the Twin Lakes with the best mix of music, news, weather, and fun. If it's in the Twin Lakes, 